Let's do some news! Hi, my name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is May 8th, 2020. Never say pwn in person. Don't say that shit in real life, okay? That's also a slap, just like Lel, slap. Okay, Lel slap, pwn slap, okay? Poggers, <sighs> situational, situational, okay? The time Ooh, is $2. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me to turn that off. <laughs> D cell 82, thank you so much. Uh, and it's off. So, boy, for anything, slap. We slap for everything. Uh, <laughs> don't say them things in real life, man. It's weird. So, we have a few things to cover today. Like, for example, kicking things off with, uh, well, first of all, we'll go to a brief, brief overview. Let's see. Uh, so, we had the, uh, the Xbox thing that happened yesterday. Or day after yesterday, right? Whenever it was. And uh, if you're watching this YouTube day after yesterday. Uh, so we're going to go over that a little bit. There's some cool things there. Some interesting takeaways. Also, some drama related to that, of course. Because we can't do anything on the internet without drama. being Someone's got to get mad about something. Um, and uh, rightly so in some cases. But at the same time, also not. We'll talk about that soon. Um, whoops. Uh, Animal Crossing video that was released. Has now mysteriously disappeared. The one that showed all those cool features and everything. And I said that Nintendo might DMCA it. Well, it has disappeared. But it wasn't Nintendo. <gasps> for a change! What? It wasn't Nintendo taking it down. They're probably waiting for it to go back up and then they'll probably uh, take it down. But uh, we'll talk about that in a second as well. Uh, and other things. But first, but first, we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, Doom Eternal Bethesda versus. Mick Gordon. Yes. Uh, now, if you've not heard, Mick Gordon expressed that he was, mm, expressed that he was a little displeased with the way certain things were mixed with the soundtrack that was released with Doom Eternal. Uh, it was released late, if, I believe, right? Uh, but the people that got their hands on it, they picked it up and they said, and they started posting waveforms and saying that it was done poorly. It was mixed poorly. So, here's the way making music for video games works. Typically, what we do is, I say we, because I, I, I made a soundtrack for a game once, so I can say we, right? Uh, so, typically, what we do is we make songs in pieces, right? So, we'll come up with like a riff, like, like in Doom, da -da 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 -da, that's a riff, right? And so, we'll loop that with some drums and shit, right? Da -da 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 -da. Put that together in a nice little block, okay? Maybe it's like a 10 second loop or something, 15 second loop with a couple variations or something. Uh, and then they'll write another chunk and then another chunk and then another chunk. And you have all these little blocks, okay? And you basically hand the developer uh, and the end game sound designer, like the blocks. And the guy said, and the, the sound designer says, okay, cool. So whenever, whenever he busts out the chainsaw and he's like, then it's gonna play this song, right? And it's gonna be seamless. It's gonna seamlessly transition, okay? It's basically, it's dynamic music. It's situational music. It's whatever you wanna call it, right? Uh, it is, it is, uh, what does Mixer do for soundtrack? Yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we're in there. Uh, and so it's just a way for them to take these chunks and turn them into uh, what sounds like a cohesive soundtrack. If you've played Doom, this is actually in my Doom, uh, in, in my Doom 2016 review, I, I made it a point to point out uh, that they had done this so well because almost no matter what you did, everything was in key. Uh, every like when you chainsaw someone to play like a riff, right? And then that was like perfectly like streamlined with everything else, and it just felt fluid. It just felt really, really good. Uh, yes, we all know that a soundtrack can make or break a game, absolutely. And Mick Gordon's soundtrack has definitely added to the game experience. While some people have said, I've seen on Twitter, they have said that I didn't buy the game for the soundtrack. That may be true. You didn't, maybe didn't buy the game for the soundtrack, but you cannot argue that the music was well suited for the soundtrack. Uh, unless, unless you just have bad taste, in which case, which is fine. If there's people out there who just have like poor opinions about stuff, you know? Um, you would say defined Doom 2016 Eternal. Absolutely. Yeah, I would say the same thing. So, we'll scroll down a little bit here. So, Mick Gordon is a far more talented audio engineer than me. It's not even close to what makes this especially frustrating. I expect much more, much better from him. Again, the music itself is phenomenal, but this mix on the official soundtrack is frankly terrible. And this is a, this guy actually posted a uh, a link or an image that was, I think, floating around like Resetera or something like that. 
uh, is going to give it to me. There we go. Where he shows the two waveforms. So this is a more dynamic waveform. This one is a brick wall. You could see how flat everything looks. Like this is pretty, um, like this, this is flat. Like this, this is not what you want to see when you're mixing a song. Not now anyways. Uh, there was a period of time where we were in like what's called the loudness wars in production where we would just push for that. Like we, we wanted that, we wanted that average RMS like decibel to be like 0.1. We wanted that shit slammed. We wanted to compress. So that way it's like, God, just, just breathing on you. Just every, every single piece of the song is just breathing in your face or in your ears rather uh and that's what we got with this whereas a dynamic track gives more room for things to have space so the best way to to, to compare this like probably an easy go pick like any any song from wings right or any song from led zeppelin uh anything from the 70s really <laughs> any kind of like 70s rock or something uh and then compare that to uh, like, what's well, like peak loudness wars? Stained, uh, stained. What is that? F Thirteen Shades of Grey album or whatever. Pick any song off of that track, and you'll hear the difference. It just sounds like it's it's everything is in your face. There's no room for anything. So a kick drum is now meshed with the bass, which is meshed with the guitar. Everything is just slamming your ears. So that's what the Loudness Wars was doing, is trying to make the loudest possible song. Uh, so that way it sounds louder than the previous song that was played on the radio. It was, it was, and it became such an insane thing. Um, was there a couple of Green Day albums that got reproduced to sound less ass? Oh, I don't know about that, actually. But I wouldn't be surprised because, like I said, there was it was a really weird period of time. And thankfully, I think we're past that point now um, where it was just like they had to slam all the tracks gotta slam all the tracks the loudness wars so if you want if you want to look it up well the loudness wars is a good uh is a good term to search for on uh, on youtube i actually have a video where i was going over uh some of the videos that i was uh, or some of the um music that i was producing for 201x 201y where i had two different loudness settings right one of them was uh was highly compressed basically one of them looked like this and the other one looked like this 201y looked like this 201x looked like this uh and it was it was just a thing so that way i could um I could appeal to people that liked both because we were in that we, we were at that stage where I noticed that we were kind of getting away from the, having everything slammed, but people really still liked that. And so I got mixed, I got mixed reviews, but it was good reviews because people either liked one or they liked the other. So I felt like it was a good choice at the time, but I would never do that again. <laughs> I would never do that again. So the reason why these, well, first, uh, so the soundtrack is slammed. People are like, what the, what the hell is going on? Mick Gordon saying that he is, 201Y is your favorite? That's my favorite too, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, Mick Gordon says, I didn't mix those and would not have done that. You'll be able to spot the small handful of tracks I mix, Meat Hook, Command and Control, etc. cetera. Uh, and then of course, yeah, they're going more detail about all this stuff. So that was actually like the last tweet that he had sent out, I think. Let me go back, let me go to, uh, to, to Mick's timeline here and take a look. But yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain, like, he hasn't really said much of anything since then. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I didn't mix that. Here it is. Here's the actual tweet. That was it. Like, and that was, that was the end of it. So, fast forward to, what is it? Let me grab that link. Just the other day. That's where we're getting to, Steambub. Just the other day. We get a very lengthy open letter from... Uh, Marty Stratton, who is the executive producer of Doom Eternal, basically the guy in charge of Doom Eternal. Uh, and I read the entire thing and I feel like I have a good grasp of what happened. People are going to take sides here, right? You're going to say, so first off, let me read the TLDR because the TLDR actually wraps it up pretty well and I'll add to it as well. So the TLDR here is that... Uh, Mick Gordon didn't even come close to releasing his mix soundtrack in time for the release deadline, even after agreeing to it and getting a six-week extension. They uh, then agreed to have id mix some of the songs and combine them for the OST uh, to make up for a slow pace. Then only managed to mix 12 out of 59 songs himself, many of which weren't combat tracks. Then got mad at how id mixed the other 47, and now will not be composing the Doom uh, Eternal DLC. So, I've read books shorter than that letter. <laughs> Uh, so they contracted him in January to make a soundtrack 
uh, to be released and delivered by, what was it, March or something, right? And in February, Mick came forward and he said he's, he's got some, uh, uh, he said there's more work than it was, what's anticipated. Now, remember those blocks I was telling you about? Little blocks of music, right? Not, so, not entire songs, just little blocky chunks of just things that are used in the game. Those things are already compressed to look like what you saw in that picture, right? Uh, they're already mixed. Okay, all that stuff. They're basically already done, and they're just in chunks. Uh, what ended up happening was, and this is this is even by Mick's own, like Mick even, uh, according to this, uh, suggested that that would be something that they should do, is have the lead audio designer take those chunks and make songs out of them. So it's kind of like, what was that? What was that? Uh, uh, um, Guitar Hero, like... DJ, it was a DJ hero or whatever, or the one that has the cards where you can like mix and match songs or whatever, and you can kind of put them down and make your own, like, you know, kind of remix or mashup or whatever, using this like card system, whatever that thing was called. That's basically how they ended up having to do this, uh, where they had to take the, the chunks and make complete and coherent songs out of it. It also explains why, if you look at the waveform, you have weird, like, just weird inconsistencies where you have like this wild thing right here that just kind of pops right up. And it's because the person who made the track, who pieced the get of the track, tried to figure out a way to get the songs, the chunks to interact with each other and came up with a transition that was literally applying an effect to an already pre-mastered, pre-composed, pre-compressed track. And that, 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 adds, that adds dynamics. When you add an effect to something, whether it's a flange or a reverb or whatever, you fuck with the dynamics of that because, because well, simply because you're adding something to the track. Okay, you can't just add something and expect it to stay flat, right? Unless you go back and keyframe it to make it flat, but you still, it's going to add to it. And so stuff like that stuck out to, uh, you know, to to people who were upset about this thing being so bad. Um, but in this letter, it makes it makes it makes sense to me. It feels like it feels like I feel like Mick. I think Mick is a genius, right? And may, and and maybe I'll just, we'll just use that word kind of loosely, okay? Uh, I think he is a musical genius. I think that some of the stuff that he's come up with is just amazing. Uh, there's not a lot of music out there that sounds like what Mick Gordon had did, has done for that soundtrack. There's, there's a wide gamut of, uh, of rock and metal and industrial and post-industrial and EBM and all that shit, but nothing quite sounds like the Doom soundtrack. Uh, so for me personally, I feel like Mick has basically created kind of his own like Doom core. Right, uh, you you understood some of those words, yeah, like 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 metal, <laughs> industrial. Come on, man. Um, and I think with with that kind of creative genius, uh, you sometimes you're 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 lacking in other departments, right? Anybody ever seen Amadeus? Okay, kind of get the same vibes here, right? He's, Amadeus was was tasked with uh, creating something, took him a while, and he ended up never finishing it. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, for Amadeus, it ended up in his uh, Mozart. I uh, ended up in his death, but uh, in this case, it just ended up ends up in his uh, uh, relationship—the death of the relationship between Mick Gordon and uh, uh, and Bethesda. Um, and so, the I could see that him trying to mix these tracks that he'd already written all these chunks for and make songs out of them. I could see how that could get. Uh, that could be a burden. That could be so, so much work. I, I, I'm sitting on like probably eight tracks that are basically done, but it's a burden for me to have to go through and try to finish it because I can't get myself in that mindset. I can't get myself into that, in, you know, into that space to like create and start to like make music and all that stuff. Um, so, so great at making music, but not great at finishing on time and being too nitpicky to make it too perfect. That's me. Also Mick. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I can, I, I personally feel like I can relate to this and I understand it. And you know, maybe he hasn't necessarily presented it himself well or done anything to like curb any of the, uh, any of the bullshit that people are flinging at the lead audio designer, which he should have. Right. But this makes me feel like maybe personality wise, he's just not really built for that. Uh, agreement terms is on Mick, but the final quality stands on its software. So they both are in the wrong. Um, the reality of art versus product. Exactly. Like when we talk about, when we talk about, you know, like you know, being creative and, and delivering on a piece of art, like how many times have you heard of somebody getting, uh, somebody paying for a piece of art or whatever, and then it never being delivered. How many times have you heard that? 
here on this stream with a with a with an album cover that I try to get done by a certain somebody, and then it just never showed up, and I ended up having to get my money back. I don't think I ever got my money back from her actually. Uh, thank you. Thankfully, Crane came around, and oh, there, look at there he is. <laughs> Thankfully, Crane came around and uh, and was able to deliver on a product in time. But that's the thing, man. Like it's. It's hard. It's hard to get artists to commit to something because they're just not built that way. They're just not built that way. Uh, and you know, if they contracted him in January, that makes me feel like that's not a lot of time to come up with a groundbreaking sequel to the original soundtrack uh, in just a few months' time. Uh, now, I feel like it's it's the it's the fault of both of them. It's like on one hand, you have an artist who can't i guess can't i don't know, empathize or something right there, mick gordon is definitely at fault for some of this for sure um but on, on the on the other side you have bethesda who has clearly not dealt with an artist that had such free reign over their own uh you know content like they did with mick they gave him free reign to basically say hey, hey take a couple months make make a soundtrack and just Bring, bring it to us. That's what that's what they wanted, uh, and that was a risk on their on their part. They did, I feel like they did everything they possibly could in order to uh, remedy it for the fans because and they even say that you know, there's antitrust law or not antitrust, but there's consumer laws that if they did not deliver the soundtrack, they could they they may be forced to refund money for all those products that they sold, and that's a big deal. You know, like that's that's a big thing for them to, 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 to have to be faced with. So either they piece together parts of the soundtrack. Again, this was with mixed blessing, uh, or they just refund all those, uh, all those game copies. June 2016 OST came out like five months after the release. Make at fall for accepting because that fall for making it a collector's edition add on without ample time. Hey, I do feel like it's not ample time. Yeah. I mean, to write a soundtrack it, like that in, in two and a half, three months, that to me, that sounds crazy. Like that sounds, I'm, I, I know that, um, I, I know that he, he probably has some sketches sitting around. He could probably piece together a couple of things, but still that's, that's a lot of time for mixing and mastering and doing all that stuff. That's a lot to do. And at the same time, exactly. He, sh he, he shouldn't have said he could do it. And I know that people want to take side and tie take sides because you were, we're very black and white, you know, the world right now, uh, where we want to say, you know. Bethesda's in the wrong or Mick Gordon's in the wrong. But to me, this is a clear cut case of both of them just making dumb decisions or not committing to things that they should have and then, uh, or not planning like they should have. And then, uh, and then just, <laughs> that was it. Like, I feel like it's just both case in both cases, they both fucked up and now we're left with, you know, probably a good soundtrack, right? Uh, I haven't listened to the Eternal o OST, but I really loved what I heard in, in the game, so I will probably listen to it. Uh, but it's definitely not purely of mix creation. Uh, they could have just made a pre-order code for the collector's edition. Well, a lot of this stuff is like, could could they should they have done that? Could they should have could have woulda right? But they probably had faith that Mick was going to deliver from the get go. And that's, that's where they, I mean, that's where they goofed is like, they gave him complete creative control, an artist, complete creative control over everything. Uh, and they just expected a product to be delivered by a deadline. And while that works with some artists, it does not work with all of them. And this is, and this is, this is the product of what happens when, you know, everybody drops the ball. Uh, welcome to the world of adults where nuance is key and nothing's ever black and white. Uh, it's something I'm unsure of when they say they asked them to do a soundtrack in January. Do they mean all the music for the game or just the mixes for the OST? Uh, it's it, according to this article to this article, <laughs> basically, <laughs> according to this expose here, um, you know, it, it did seem like they they gave him uh, three months to do uh, well, plus plus an extension. So they gave him a couple months plus a six week extension to do 12 songs. Uh, so when I was saying like, yo, oh, 59 tracks or whatever, I don't think that's I think it's a little misleading you know, 59 tracks or whatever, but he did deliver on, uh, I think it was nine tracks by the due date and then an additional, I think two tracks. And then the final 12th track was came, uh, even after that. So, uh, this was coming from trust me. Well, one of the reasons I can't pull the trigger and start a new project, I can't start anything. I am confident I can finish hard to not be, 
uh, hard to not be a perfectionist and just get it and just get working. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, Brian, I a hundred percent, I a hundred percent resemble that remark. <laughs> it's hard, man. Like it's really, really difficult. Like you know, when you're, when you're in a creative space, you want what you have in here to be, you know, on paper or be, you know, in a, in a music form or whatever you want that to be there. And if you have doubt that you can actually, you know, follow through and get, get it to the point to where it's a hundred percent what you envisioned, it's really difficult to release it because you know, in your head, you know, in your head, it's like, this is uh like this, this is not quite good enough, but it's got to represent me now, I guess. And so you kind of get stuck. It's like a roadblock. Uh, even as a programmer, it can be that way. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it can be. Yeah. How, how could you, like, can you start a project that you're just never going to fully develop or, or what? Like that's tough. And then you get it out there to the masses and then you're ridiculed for not finishing it. Oh, it's so easy. Just do this thing. Oh, is it? Is it so easy? <sighs> uh, but this should also value and respect what Mick adds to the experience. I think I, that's, again, that's, I feel like that's one of the mistakes that was made is that, uh, is, is that they should have given him more time. And at the same time, Mick shouldn't have said that he could get it done in that amount of time. You see, like everybody, everybody dropped the ball on this and, and who ended up paying for it is the fans. Like we wanted a Mick Gordon soundtrack from beginning to end, Mick Gordon. Uh, and I said, we got, you know, we got Mick Gordon music, but not necessarily in the way that he would have sequenced it. Uh, and you know, he, he did say that he did say uh, in a tweet that he, or in a, in a DM or something that he may not work with them in the future or whatever. And that was a surprise to, uh, to the people who worked on doom, but they went ahead and uh, granted him his wishes and they decided to go ahead and part ways. They're not going to be working with him for the OST for the, uh, well, any upcoming projects probably. And of course, not for um, uh, the Doom Eternal DLC. So, Brick Garden, Jesus Christ. I've had a personal product that I really want to get started and get out of there, but I've been sitting on it for months, and it definitely isn't a time issue. It's a stupid emotional artist issue. Exactly. Stupid emotional artist. <laughs> so dumb. So stupid brain. Brain getting in the way of things. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, what is this? Someone called out streamers on YouTube and, uh, you were one of the major ones. What? Called out streamers. What did I say? About what? It's cringe. Sure. Yeah. Give me a link. Give me a link. Let me see. We'll see what this is. Oh, was it the Warframe video? Oh, wait, was it the Warframe video? Oh, the video went through. You motherfucker. Fuck it. Fuck it. Hey, everybody. I got it right here. I got it right here. I got it for him. Got you. I got you guys. Got you guys. <laughs> Man, I haven't been Rick Rolled since 2005. Fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> That was pretty good though, man. You get a pass once every 10 years, okay? So, <laughs> what's next? <laughs> Fucking got him. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I know, it wasn't purple, man. Usually it's purple on my screen. I didn't see the purple. <laughs> okay, all right. Moving on. <laughs> Fucking bitch. All right. So there was a, uh, there, there was a video that was released, uh, featuring a collection of very, very cool animal crossing features that just don't exist right now. Um, but they seem reasonable enough and beneficial enough in terms of quality of life that maybe Nintendo should consider it, right? Maybe they should consider it. Uh, I said, I tweeted about it the, a few nights ago and you know, some of you guys saw it and some people were like, like for example, right back stun, he says, why would you do this? This is, this is all absolutely insanely good design. And the effort for this joke was way over the top. And I said, the effort was so good, so good that it'll probably get DMCA by Nintendo for being too close to a fan project. And then I went to go get the video for today's show because I want to show it. And I, I'm greeted with this and I could not believe it. <laughs> could not believe. Uh, who would do such a thing? So I decided to dig 
and this happened this happened like 12 hours like 13 14 hours ago like it wasn't even like a full day ago this just happened um and I decided to dig and see like what was going on. And so I went, I went to the original uh, creators list or a uh, uh, Twitter account. And, uh, and he has, he's got a, a bunch of stuff actually you talked about here, but uh, he said it was 19 hours ago. Oh, here we go. So 17 hours ago, I just had my Imagine Animal Crossing's vid take it down via copyright claim from a Gmail address, not a Nintendo domain. Uh, and, and the claim itself does not provide any explanation. This is literally my first monetized video, and I have absolutely no idea how to handle the situation. Uh, I'll play the video in a second here, but, um, uh, well, a, a super cut of it. Actually, he has it right here. Uh, but, yeah, he said, I love what he put right here. He says, I feel like I'm in the recap episode of an anime about my YouTube career. Approved as a partner on day one. Upload first video on day two. First video went viral on day three. Fraudulent takedown on day four. What's going to happen on day five? I cannot believe this. <laughs> <laughs> this poor guy is getting like an this is this is seriously a fast tracking his way into a YouTube career right here. So good. It's all it's all uphill from here, really. Like you got you got copyright strike on your on your fourth day of of uh being a YouTube partner? Man, you're in good shape. What is this? Is this my is this my is on the way? Should right, 18 minutes. All right, cool. 18 minutes. Um So here's the video here. Uh Hello? oh no no no, that's the uh that's the the, the Rika here. He actually made a a, a little have a super cut here that shows a little bit of everything in less than two minutes let's watch it real quick select the customize button to change how an item looks before you make it diy benches will now pull from your home storage when crafting quickly use consumable items one click the drop button will quickly drop items with a single press the transfer button will quickly deposit items in storage and withdraw them from storage too you can now check your pockets without leaving the storage menu. Press Y to sort all the items in your pockets. The grab option lets you split stacks of items exactly how you want. And the eat option now lets you consume multiple food items, more detailed item information when hovering over items. Buy in bulk option lets you pick how much of an item you want to purchase at a time. You can now buy multiple of the same type. Some of these things you're just like, why, why are these not like part of the game? And, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's so easy to, after a game has been released, to go back and say, why haven't all these things been adding, added in? This is such a no-brainer, right? Yeah, it's a Mario track um, for the soundtrack there. It looks, yeah, so you if you hadn't seen the original, the original, this is like a, a sped up super cut that just kind of shows like everything kind of condensed. Uh, the original, which is obviously take it down now, uh, was really well put together it actually yeah it looked like it actually did look like a legit nintendo direct update like the way that he had put it together was so well done um and so he was so it was removed and it even says right here uh it shows that uh it was removed well first off it was removed by a gmail account so we see here's a contact claim it the video was taken down attend copyright school <laughs> but it was removed by a gmail account karen i was like karen at gmail.com is what it was uh and actually uh uh you know a uh, freycore uh, what do you i think freycore so you would have said it in uh in discord um it was probably someone that was upset that it was not real that it was not real so they got mad and they took it down uh and then this is the best part they literally downloaded my video and used it to file the claim against me. So they <laughs> they downloaded his video and then they uploaded that as the as the reason why they're filing copyright claim. Just so dumb. This is this this I mean he's gonna get his he's gonna get this resolved. Surely he's gonna get this resolved. Um and if anything, this just adds a bit more popularity to the video. The video was already like, what do you say? It was hundreds of thousands of views that he was already getting, um, and probably some good good money. But I think he's gonna, I think it's gonna get, because uh, all he has to do is just fight it. He just fights it. So he fights it, and they're not gonna fight him back on the deal unless it's actual Nintendo, like using masquerading as a Gmail account, which would be even shadier. But uh, yeah, no, he's he's. Why is it still an exploit? <sighs> That's the big, that's the big problem here is that it's that easy to, to just take down a video. It's that easy. And we've seen this happen before. We've seen this happen before with, with uh, bigger YouTubers will uh, maliciously sometimes, uh, they'll do a super cut or a react video or something. And then they'll upload that to the content ID system. And then the system will flag the original contents and get it taken down. 
which doesn't make any sense, obviously. But that's just this again, another another example of uh, of Twitch or sorry, of sorry, I'm so used to that uh, of YouTube, YouTube's copyright system being broken. Just being broken. But yeah, they uploaded to the yeah, it's to the to the back to the system, uh, not to their YouTube channel, but to the system to show that they, they have they own the content or whatever. It's 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 completely asinine. Um, and so, you know, the 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 I'll, I'll put the mirror for the uh, that little supercut video, and you could go to his uh, to his YouTube channel or to his uh, Twitter account and find it here, which is a silly place to go and find videos. But I guess so. Doesn't Nintendo nowadays just take your money when they claim it instead of striking it? I haven't. I don't know. Uh, I don't have any examples of any of the recent issues. Um, in terms of like what they have done for follow up for uh, you know taking out videos or whatever, but. Typically, yeah, I feel like they they copyright strike things just to get it removed. Um, uh, is Nintendo only strikes stuff more like fan games now. Exactly. Yeah, I was just joking about Nintendo taking it down, but at the same time, in the back of my head, I think I was really thinking that they might do it. But but right now, this is developing, right? Like as far as we know, it's Karen at Gmail dot com. It's not Nintendo at Gmail uh, dot com. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. But just you know, I know that some people have like no faith in Nintendo putting in some of those really cool quality of life things for Animal Crossing. We automatically default to oh that that's, those are such good ideas. There is no way that Nintendo would put that in, uh, unless of course we're talking about online stuff, which of course they're not going to put anything online because they're really bad at that. But in general, that's the mindset. There's no way they're going to do it. No faith. No faith. Let me remind you of just recently what they did with Mario Maker. This was, now this, we didn't cover this on news, but if you have not seen this video, uh, if you play Mario Maker and you've not seen this video, please go and watch it. But they added so much shit that we would normally look at and say, oh, I thought I would have to wait for Mario Maker 3 to get this. And no, they've added a Mario Maker 2. Let me see if I can find, like, for example, you have the world builder. So you can actually go through and make worlds similar to how we had in, in Super Mario World, of course, Mario Bros. 3 and all that, an overworld map. And then you could put your levels that you've created all over the place. Like, this kind of shit is crazy. This is an entire system that they built for people to use. Make your own whole ass Mario game. That's right. That's right. Like, this is, this is a huge thing for them to do. Um, and look how detailed it is. And so for me, like, this is a great example of Nintendo actually, like, understanding what people want and delivering on it. I have not played this myself. Declan has, uh, because they add all the Koopa kids and he's, you know, big fan of, of all the Koopa kids, um, bunch of little bratty ass kids, but, uh, Declan's played it and he, you know, he said he loved it. Uh, but yeah, this is, it's just, it shows that there is, there is a chance. There is a chance, man. Uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, Mushroom, and World Maker were huge for the same update. Yeah, it's true. The Super Mario Bros. 2 just changes the entire way you play. The entire way you play is different. Mario Bros. 2 had such unique mechanics compared to everything else. Uh, the only trust I have in Nintendo is because they outright bought the IP for Advance Wars in 2018. Oh, for... Uh, uh, you know, I saw that, you know, they saw this and are gonna... Are go, oh man, these sound great. I mean, I hope that somebody there saw some of those, uh, some of the features that were, feature that were featured in the video. Um and are like doing something with it you know like showing it to somebody else that can make a difference or something um did they change the jump physics when they changed the art style they uh, i don't think i don't know if the jump physics themselves changed when you switch to like super mario super mario 2 <laughs> super mario brothers um after you get the mushroom but i know that you can ride on enemies uh like bullet bills and such and just all kinds of just all kinds of crazy stuff it really just changes the way that the uh, the mechanic a lot of the mechanics in the game uh, function and then of course the world builder is huge so so yeah I, I have i have just a little bit of faith that nintendo might come through uh but we gotta get that video back online though guys uh if you haven't heard of it, advanced wars was what led to fire emblem being sold in the west i don't know what advanced wars is there's a bunch of games now that get referenced for that but uh i didn't know about that though fire emblem and all that stuff um moving on let me check on my, let me check on my delivery uh so moving on <coughs> So Jeff Cayley, the pause was just, I'll just gather my thoughts. Uh, Jeff Cayley has a uh, history of being associated with, um, 
E3, right? He always always hosts the show, you know, beforehand. Uh, he, Jeff, Cat, you know, the Mountain Dew and Doritos guy. Okay, sure, you, you sure you remember Dorito Gate? Come on, Ira. Come on, come on, buddy. So yeah, that guy. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, fine. So that guy. <laughs> The Video Game Awards, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know who he is, right here, the producer creator for the Game Awards, Gamescom Opening Night Live, Curator Summer Game Fest, all right? Shut up, Ira. Now, uh, he he announced that they're going to be doing uh, Summer Game Fest, which is now going to be essentially a replacement for E3. Typically, E3, we get a whole bunch of... Um, a whole bunch of presentations and everything before the show and then you go on the show floor and you, you get to play all those games and everything right uh, that's typically the way that uh, uh, the you know the E3 typically functions but since we don't have an E3 this year or any other convention this year uh, it's got to get creative with the way that we do some of these things and so uh, he introduced Summer Game Fest and we'll pull that over here Summer Game Fest goes from May to August 2020. Oops, I have my, let me turn off my, my dark mode filter here. Google Docs. Jeez, please. Um, this is basically going to be an online, it's a schedule of online events where you can basically catch up on whatever the latest thing is from those random devs. And if we go down and take a look at the schedule here, we, <laughs> we can see that the most recent one was the inside Xbox that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Uh, and that happened yesterday. Yes, yesterday. <laughs> I have no concept of time right now. Uh, and then we have another one coming up on May 12th with a surprise game reveal. And then we go to June. We have a couple of events here. Uh, obviously, this June was, was going to be uh, E3 month, and that's not happening. So uh, we have a Summer Game Festival. Probably other things will be added because E3 is gone, so we'll probably have more uh, things. So all this stuff is all going to be streamed all streamed events. Uh, the first one, which happened just again, just yesterday, was the. Let me grab it real quick. Uh, was the one for. Uh, let me go back to the beginning here. Zoop. Was the one for the Xbox One X? Xbox Series X, sorry. <laughs> Jesus, names. Uh, and you could see, like, it's it's weird. It's weird, but this is the way we're doing things. Uh, where we have a bunch of people in a Zoom call <laughs> with a giant fridge. <laughs> giant fridge. Fridge Series X in the background. Uh, dude is hype. He's going to start introducing games and everything. It, it's, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting way that we have to adapt to not being able to do shows, not being able to go to conventions. And, you know, I, I, I feel like even though it's, it seems like uh, Jeff Cayley's Summerfest is really just a central kind of uh, uh, organized or a place where you could just get all the scheduling at once, kind of like, like TL.net is for like StarCraft or something, right? You could go to a site and just get all the different, uh, you know, all the different uh, schedules and everything in one spot. That's what I feel like it is. It's just basically a scheduling site, so you could go and watch all this stuff uh, and know when to get it. Um, Game Breaker was so ahead of everyone. That's right. You know, it's funny. You you look at some of this and it's just like, wow, man. Like nobody has good cameras at home. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, on the right, yes. On the left, man. Let's talk about the uh, the games itself uh so some of the games that they announced like for example the one that uh that's playing right now actually uh bright memory looks like I mean, this is like such a crazy mix of i mean we got sword fighting we got guns we got grapples we got all kinds of crazy stuff uh this one this one game was as mentioned uh created by a single person which seems also uh crazy but it's what a hectic like riot i mean so here's the thing Overall, people are not satisfied with, I mean, if we look at how many likes, just like right here at the bottom, people are not satisfied with the, uh, with the overall production, the overall presentation. And rightfully so, because it says right here on the title, Gameplay. <laughs> and it doesn't really feel like there's enough actual gameplay. Granted, right now, you could say maybe we're watching gameplay right now, right? Uh, but in a lot of cases, most of it was just like, just, just, mm, like cinematic cutscenes. But if you read the fine print at the bottom of every video, 
it does say <laughs> that was a DeLorean I know too. Uh, it does say that it's all rendered using that hardware. So I know that we've heard it before. It's like, oh, it's rendered live using the hardware. It's like in, in the most optimal of situations or something. Uh, but some of the games do look good, but we don't really know how they play. Um, right memory is a bunch of cobbled together and stolen assets. Ooh, is it? Yeesh. It looks good though. <laughs> Render doesn't mean shit. So we did get a chance to see Dirt 5. Uh, Dirt 5 looks pretty good. It looks, I mean, like pretty good. Like not like amazing or anything, just pretty good. Um, again, like we won't really know until we're actually sitting there and playing it. Like how it's going to look, unfortunately, or get more actual uh, uh, gameplay footage. Uh, Scorn stood out to me. Scorn looks crazy. I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but uh, let me just kind of fast forward a little bit here. But I, this is basically H.R. Geiger, the game. Uh, I haven't looked into this to see like where they pulled their inspiration from, like in terms of like, where they got, the, where this, who's making the game and all that stuff. But to me, I, this looks like this is H.R. Geiger, 100%. If you're not familiar who Geiger is, that's Aliens, okay? So you look at Aliens, the, the series, that's what you're looking at here is, is HR Geiger. Uh, that's been in development for a while. So the, the, a lot of these, a lot of these games um, are new to me because I haven't seen the trailers, right? Actually, almost every single one of these is new to me, uh, except for Valhalla uh, and Bloodlines. But the Bloodlines, uh, I think the Bloodlines, uh, that trailer was new though. Um, there's a gameplay video from a couple years ago. The Vagina Monster Guy, there you go. Microsoft and UBI commented on the feedback regarding this if you haven't seen it yet. Yes, I have. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, but thank you. Uh, yeah, but visually, this is amazing. Like, I don't know what this game is, but I want to play it just to experience all that. I was growing up. I had like I had a I think I had some aliens like trading cards or whatever. And a lot of it focused on just H.R. Geiger's art. Like some of them was just like, here's a place. Here's a, here's a, here's a setting, you know, backdrop to us to a set on uh, on alien. And it was like that was a trading card. <laughs> <laughs> just insane just insane uh some of the stuff that that uh, geiger had come up with in terms of design for that um let's see what else uh chorus chorus is pretty interesting if you guys haven't seen it did you play phantasmagoras majority nah, no i've not uh this seemed pretty interesting a, a, at first it was like if you look at it, there's some gameplay elements here it seems like it's just kind of like a like tie fighter right just kind of flying around just uh, shooting and whatnot but the the concept seems pretty pretty interesting the gameplay, like you get a little glimpse of the gameplay, it's kind of like, okay, I could see that being kind of cool, but at the same time, it's like, I mean, visually it's stunning, but it's space. I feel like it's super easy to make a visually stunning game in space. Um, it made you think it was Mass Effect related. Yeah, like, like I, I like what they're kind of proposing here. It's, it's kind of like the like the ship chooses you kind of thing, you know, like the, the wand bullshit. Uh, an updated descent. Well, I wouldn't call it descent because it's not, you know, I'm not doing the, well, I guess we don't really know if that, the six degrees of freedom. It looks like it's more of like a rail shooter. Again, like TIE fighter kind of stuff. That's what it feels like. The psychic connection to the ship. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Madden 21, Bloodlines 2, which Bloodlines 2, the trailer was trippy. I, I don't know if this trailer has been released before. Uh, is this a world premiere? No, it's not. Uh, but to be just the opening scene here is pretty dope. Like, I'll just leave this here so you can see it. But basically, these are all like real people, and they show all these different, uh, you know, vampire like stories and everything. It was released yesterday. Okay. Uh, but I mean, in terms of like setting a stage, setting a story, like it looks interesting. In terms of gameplay, though, I don't know. I didn't play the original Bloodline, so maybe some of you guys have. Um, but it means it all about just creatively murdering people. <laughs> All their faces are the same glitch faces from Assassin's Creed. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else? Uh, Call of the Sea. Call of the Sea seems, it just seems kind of like a uh, more of a uh, story driven kind of a, uh, uh, I mean, we don't know because there's no gameplay, <laughs> but it kind of feels like it's kind of a more of a story driven uh, walking simulator. Uh, but I mean, I wanted to show it because I think visually, this is a great example of showing the flexibility of the engine. You know, we're used to seeing racing games. We're used to seeing sports games. We're used to seeing action games, horror games, or whatever. We don't really see a lot of like Sea of Thieves style, like kind of cartoony, uh, you know, looking games in in like a launch trailer that are like that shows like the, just just how flexible an engine can be in terms of uh, visual aesthetics. Uh, it had a great atmosphere, real unique feel to it. Oh, Bloodlines, yeah. You could play it different ways to go all the way. I'll go all stealth. Look forward to, to two. Nice. She was walking in a while. It's right. For a brief second, there's a little bit there. 
This next one's The Ascent. Um, this one, again, another visually stunning looking game. Um, it's funny. So check this out. So they have all these elements here where you have like all these like almost RPG elements. And I was like, oh, cool. It's like a Mass Effect, right? And then, and then they show the gameplay right here. And I was like, oh, it's a Diablo. <laughs> like it's an ARPG. And I was kind of torn because I'd set myself up to look at it like, oh, like, oh man, this might be a great like world to explore from like the first or third person you know, pers uh, perspective. And then they flip it and now we're watching, you know, uh, you know, an asymmetrical or sorry, isometric, uh, you know, ARPG. And I mean, it looks really fucking good. Like, I mean, I play ARPG, ARPGs. I would totally play this, especially, I mean, it clearly it's controller, like controller controlled, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. Certainly. Xbox, duh. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> Jeez, I forgot what we're looking at here. So yeah, the ascent looks pretty good aesthetically. Um, there's medium, which is kind of a trippy psychological thriller. Uh, Scarlet Nexus, Yakuza Like a Dragon, which looks insane. I feel like some of you guys might be really into this. Uh, but just visually, some of this shit looks nuts. Um, there we go. Da -da -da -da. I, I don't even understand. Like, it's just a fighting game, but it's, it's just like the most supernatural and crazy. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So it's Yakuza. It's called Yakuza Like a Dragon, uh, part of the Yakuza series. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just insane. Uh, it's more, it's more than just a fighting game. Oh no, 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 no. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, I've angered. I've angered. Uh, it's a turn-based JRPG combat, apparently. Oh, really? Is it? It's turn-based, huh? Well, then. It look. I mean, th there isn't even a clip here. Yeah, this guy is uh, talking for a second, but there's even a small clip where it looks like it's more of an action game. But it could be. I think you're right. Maybe maybe this is just the action sequence that you get whenever you have a character attack another character. But I thought this was, like, you're actively controlling the character. Um, the Yakuza like a dragon kind of like, oh, yeah. It's already out in Japan. Oh, there you go. So it is turn-based combat. Oh, wow. Well, I'm even more interested in it now. <laughs> uh, and then they showed a little bit of uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And that was, uh, you know, it was, it was a trailer I hadn't seen yet for that. So uh, maybe it was a unique one, but, uh, but still. Overall, though, very minimal actual gameplay. Everything was rendered on an Xbox, uh, rendered in real time or whatever on an Xbox. But we don't really know what that means, you know, so... We'll have to wait for actual, you know, gameplay on that. People were really upset about the whole thing. So, so much so that we actually got a response from uh, one of the members here. So, first off, somebody pointed out, says, They, Xbox, stressed that the Inside Xbox event would have gameplay, trailers, and sneak peeks. Not just gameplay, like many outlets and YouTubers are saying. It was exactly what it was. Bright memory, bright, bright memory, uh, bright memory, second extinction, the ascent, blah, 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 uh, and more had gameplay. This is a little misleading. Like we just watched the ascent. It was like little clips. Uh, we just watched uh, Call of the Sea and it had like two seconds of gameplay. So even this guy's tweet is a little misleading. But at the same time, I understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to say, hey, they didn't totally mislead people. It did have a little everything. Uh, but Aaron Greenberg did respond and he said, uh, what's his position here? He is the Xbox game marketing at, at Microsoft. So there you go. So a marketing guy responded and he said, oops, he said, uh, had we not said anything and just shown May, uh, May inside Xbox show like we did last month, I suspect reactions might have been different. Clearly we set some wrong expectation and that, expectations and that's on us. We appreciate all the feedback and can assure you we will take it all in and learn as a team. So... So this was, I mean, this is a fair response, I feel like, uh, where they, it's, it's a fair response to what I feel is an age old problem that they should have never, like, this should have never been a problem to begin with, right? How many times have we watched some kind of presentation where it was like gameplay reveal or whatever, and then we don't see gameplay and then everyone freaks out and everyone's mad and then... And then that's it. Whether it's get swept under the rug or they respond and say, hey, you know what? We'll remember that next time. Like, how, how, this is like one of the oldest arguments on the Internet <laughs> when it comes to gaming. It's like when we get a reveal, we want our gameplay reveal. We want gameplay. <laughs> we want gameplay. Uh, and so so he's apologizing for something that should have never been a problem to begin with is what I feel like. So <sighs> under promise over deliver. Assassin's Creed was the worst offender of this. Don't you guys have foam? Hashtag gameplay. People weren't upset that it wasn't 100% gameplay. They were upset that it was labeled gameplay. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's You reworded what I said. Um, 
And so yeah, people were yeah people are, are admittedly upset. Even in the comments, you can see well the channel the videos are open now. But uh, but yeah, gameplay costs CEO wants their bonus. Imagine a world where gameplay and cinematics look exactly the same. You know when I watched this last night, I I was sincerely hoping that it was that what I was watching was like rendered in real time on an Xbox like an Xbox Series X that we would get. You know because some some of the cinematics were so detailed and so cool looking i was just like man like is this what we're gonna get like that level of like like just cut scenes that are not pre-rendered and did they show halo no no halo anything uh comes down to this we know the console can play cut scenes at high quality what people want to see is gameplay that demonstrates the console's power cinematics do not yeah yeah and some of the game yeah and you know what the vampire masquerade that's that's actually um I had a note here for one of them that was just like, and I think it was Vampire Bloodlines, that it just like, it wasn't Bloodlines? Maybe it was another one, where some of them just didn't quite deliver. Oh, it was Bloodlines, actually. Yeah, some of the characters just didn't quite feel like, I mean, like, we just played Gears Tactics, right? And some of those cutscenes look amazing. Like, especially all the male characters, all they all look amazing. But for some reason, the female characters don't quite match in terms of uh, fidelity, I feel like, in, in Gears Tactics. But, um... But yeah, like I, I do, I do feel like the like and, and Bloodlines Masquerade Two, or Masquerade Bloodlines Two, um, didn't quite look like a next gen console, but but you know it, it made the cut. It's in the uh, the video and uh, people hate it. Uh, let me see. Let's see. No, they're not Shepkin, but thank you. Uh, so the last thing on this on the Xbox situation here is uh, this is your list of uh, or list, but this is your. Uh, everybody that's making games for the Xbox Series X. And, you know, some of the comments, I, I can't remember where I got this image, but some of the comments underneath the tweet that had this image was um, uh, people were just mad because they were saying, well, those aren't exclusives. It's like, no shit. <laughs> they, they didn't say it was just an exclusive list. They said that they are working with these people uh, to make games for their console. And I think that's a big deal, like, to know that there's so many game companies willing to or that are already on board to make games for the Xbox Series X because the worst thing that can happen is launching and not having any kind of, any kind of content at all, like the Stadia. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, like if we look, just take a browse around and you see Keen Software House. So I guess we're getting uh, the Space Engineers on Xbox Series X. Uh, we have Team 17. Who knows what that could be? It could be any number of things now. Um, uh, I also have like, I notice we also have IOI over here. This is some uh, Ready Player One shit over here. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's some, I mean, you look at this, it's kind of like cool. That I hope to see some of you know these uh, sequels too or whatever for some of the titles that we... Uh, uh, know and love from some of these developers. Crystal Dynamics is on here. I mean, yeah, Bugbear. We just played a Bugbear game forever. Gears Tactics. Uh, I did try to, to try the Xbox controls in Space Engineers. I did. I did try the Space Engineers Xbox controller things. It is very tough to get a grasp of. And I think I watched a video of somebody. Uh, oh God, who was it? I watched a video of somebody kind of going through and it's like, all you have to do is just this and then this and then this and all this stuff. Um, and what is this? Why is Hutton City on it twice? Top of left padding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, what is that? Two Ton Studios. Two Ton Studios. That's a that's a hilarious mistake to make, actually, because it's so obvious. <laughs> uh, oh, Wreckfest. Sorry. Yeah, duh. Yeah, we just played it uh, recently. Not Tactics. Uh, Wreckfest. Yeah. So we'll probably get Wreckfest on uh, on Xbox Series X. So so yeah, we're gonna get a lot of games that are you know ports or games we've already played on PC. But that's kind of how it works in general. Uh, you know, the exclusives and all that. Th those are things that will get more more of as we get closer to the release date or maybe actually even next week or next month when they do their June update, we'll probably get more of that. Um, doesn't even remember Wreckfest. <laughs> hey man, I'm allowed to make mistakes. Uh, Digital Extreme is on here too, by the way. Uh, two Ton Studios actual studio though, but is it two studios? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. Next up, this is old news, but just in case, just in case, just in case you should know that Nintendo had a uh, uh, they had a breach where they had a number of accounts that were compromised. Uh, I think even Josh Allen, a.k.a. Lore, was one of the ones that had his accounts compromised, even actually here in our community. Uh, oh, God, who was it? 
somebody in our community also had that, that same issue. Not that Josh is a part of our community, but he's on Discord enough to really be counted. Uh, but yeah, so Nintendo was... Uh, oh, yeah, it's right. It was right. Euro was you. That's right. Well, how could I forget? <laughs> But yeah, uh, they they shut down. They end up shutting down their NNID, the Nintendo Network ID, which is the Wii U slash 3DS uh, uh, logins, because apparently that's where they uh, where the where the exploit was, where they were able to get through. But they don't ex- they don't actually know uh, what happened, how they got in. Um, so so yeah, I guess it's something that we'll just find out eventually, kind of thing, uh, if anything at all. But they are Nintendo has uh, publicly stated asked if anybody has any idea how they got through, like to to please like let them know, uh, because all they're doing, all they did was they went through and they just forced a password reset for everybody that has a Nintendo Network ID. Uh, so if you had a 3DS, highly likely that you have uh, Nintendo Network ID on there. Um, so so make sure you check that. And from what I've read. I read two things. I don't know which one is true. The one thing I read was you can only change your password on a 3DS or a Wii U. The other thing I heard was there's a hidden link on the Nintendo site that will let you reset your password. But they did not link it, so <laughs> so I don't know. But the good news is though is that the uh even even people that were changing their passwords were getting were getting their account compromised, right? That people were getting access to it. Uh so the good news is by resetting these, the issue is resolved resolved itself. So they shut down the NNID logins and basically reset all the passwords and everything. So so that's pretty much the end of that. But we don't know how. We don't know how it happened. E92 Bomber, thank you so much, dude. <laughs> Let me see, what's up next? Oh, I should have paired this up with um I should have paired this up with the uh, uh, with the Animal Crossing video. Dang, dang, dang! I would you say, uh, Lord probably drunkenly drunkenly bought stuff and changed his mind when he sobered up. Probably, probably. I recently had to change my Nintendo password because of an unknown login, and the link was in the email. Oh, so there you go. So you could do it through your email. Yeah, cool. Uh, was that your Nintendo Network ID password, or was that your Nintendo password? These are two different things. They're they're two very different things. I know it's confusing because. Because naming schemes, but yeah, they're different things. So, um, was it your NNID password? Okay, cool. Like I said, I I, I read two different things, and I and I I I don't own a well, I own a 3DS technically, but I wasn't gonna go through and try to reset Declan's password or whatever. He doesn't have anything on his. He can't buy anything on his accounts. Um, let me see. This next one is kind of stupid and it's political. All right, so cover your eyes if you're averse to this kinds of things. But uh, uh, I I personally find it interesting that politicians play video games because how fucking dare they play video games when they should be protecting our country? How dare they play video games? Ha! 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 I didn't vote for this! This is not my tax dollars go to! Downtime? Ha! Ha! Let gasp! So mad. So mad, right? Jesus! So AOC played Animal Crossing and opened her, opened her island up and uh, went, went to visit people's islands for fun. And apparently it turned into a fucking fiasco because people are not allowed to have fun anymore. Maybe she should make a separate account. AOC off duty or some shit. So people got super mad. I don't care that she plays the game, right? I think it's cool and relatable that like politicians play games, not just her, but like just in general. When a politician is like, "Yeah, I fucking play World of Warcraft," I'm like, "Fuck yeah, that's awesome," right? And then, but of course, AOC is one of the biggest targets. If you're not, you know, she's she's a uh, she's a U.S. representative for uh, uh, here in the states, and people really don't like her because she aligns herself with Bernie Sanders and she wants you know all that stuff and whatever politics are, whatever people just. It, there's a there's a huge subset of people that just don't like her, right? At the same time, there's a bunch of people who really like her. So yeah, yeah. There, so there you go. Uh, that's typically the way politics work, isn't it? So I uh, so she went through. She's just kind of going through and just visiting people and everything. And I thought that was great. I was like, wow, this is wholesome as fuck, right? And then here comes this uh, somebody who's running for Congress here in the here in California. She's not going to get it. Uh, she's, are you kidding me? We're paying you. We're paying you to play Animal Crossing. Oh my god. Oh my God! We're paying you to play play Animal Crossing. Get the fuck out! And what did she say? She's curious for your curious for your thoughts on Trump's golf bills. Uh, so man, the entertainment value that Twitter provides. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it doesn't matter if, like, I don't care what your politics are. If you tweet that you're playing a game, I think that's awesome. I think it's great, you know? But some people, man, they'll find anything. They'll find anything <laughs> to, uh, to just, like, blow up on Twitter. Fucking Deanna Lorraine. How many times am I going to use the word Karen? <laughs> How many times am I going to use the word Karen in one episode? Jesus Christ! Karens are everywhere! It's not like she's playing in the office at DC. She's at home. Exactly. Twitter is worse than cancer. It can be. Karen is a new hater. I think Karen is code for cunt. Um, which we had a discussion on whether or not we're allowed to say that. And I think we decided with yes, but some people don't like it. But that sounds like a lot of words. Okay. But I think that's what it's, uh, this is what Karen is, uh, code for. Um, as I have a, uh, quick, someone find the articles about Karen being offensive. Exactly. Twitter is cancer, but it's my favorite, favorite social timeline. I get all my stuff, video games, news, nudes, wholesome shit. Yeah, everything's everything at once. Everything at once. I must be out of the loop on the internet, lady. Well, who the hell, what the heck is a Karen? <laughs> oh, man. A Karen? Oh, man. How do, you, how do you explain a Karen? What is worse, a Karen or a Becky? I feel like a Becky is definitely much less intrusive. Like a Becky is just kind of like keeps to themselves, all kind of kind of uh, attitude, right? Maybe in the circle of friends. Like a Becky's like a circle of friends, Karen. That's what it is. A Becky is a circle of friends, Karen. A Karen is a like. I need the attention. I need. I, I'm. Um. What is. What is. What is the octomom? Right. Like that level of shit. But a Becky is definitely like a circle of friends kind of Karen. Uh, Karen travels. Yeah. Karen. Karen. Karen really gets around. Karen will like to will like to speak to your manager exactly. Jesus. Okay, I'm old. It's confirmed. <laughs> Hold on, I'll, I'll hook you guys up. I'll hook you guys up. Let me see. Uh, let's see, Urban Dictionary, Dictionary, Urban Outfitters. Uh, Karen. Here we go. I got you guys. I got you guys. Let me see. Let's open this up. Let's see. Uh, Karen gives raisins to kids on Halloween. Drives an SUV to carpool their kids' soccer practice. Better hope the ref doesn't make a wrong call because she will sue. Loves to snap a gram to post her workout selfies. After a long day of talking to managers and driving her kids around, she sits down with her mom friends at a book club and drinks lots and lots of wine. Oh my God, Karen, do you really have to talk to Burger King manager every time they forget they forget to give you a ketchup packet? <sighs> yes, I have to. I have to Facebook and Insta snap to all my friends to make sure everyone knows to watch out. Lol. Yeah. R <sighs> slash I don't work here, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> Everyone I know is basically a care. You live on the border of Los Gatos. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You know what, Brian? I do feel like you live in kind of a Karen heavy, like neighborhood for sure. Kind of a Karen, kind of a Karen esque community. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. Excuse me, I look up Karen on Urban Outfitters since Mike won't. <laughs> All right, so lastly, and this is just, I mean, this is just for fun. Like, this is just, just to kind of add to it. I thought this was kind of cool. They're adding RoboCop to Mortal Kombat 11. And I just think that's fucking awesome. I feel like RoboCop is one of the most underappreciated superheroes of the 80s. Uh, and I think it's great to, that, that he's going to get the recognition he deserves. And we have the Terminator, by the way, is already in Mortal Kombat. Uh, but man, man, RoboCop is just so great. And he's actually going to be voiced by Peter Weller, by the way. Peter Weller, the actual actor who played Robocop, the original Robocop. Uh, <laughs> the who? The what? <laughs> Anyone under uh, W is up for grabs. So Harry Potter is next. Oh, damn. That's right. That's a, good, you know, that's a good, good point to bring up is that there's so much. See, uh, Robocop versus Terminator, the age-old debate. That's right. Uh, I believe that statue did indeed get put up in, uh, in, in, in Detroit, but I don't know if it actually ended up delivering the way that we thought it would. I actually contributed to that, uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> Apparently I am a lifelong Robocop fan. Uh, we don't talk about how Nintendo's console source code leaks, the PC port on SM64. I don't know if that's on your list. Seems like you're wrapping up. I am wrapping up. I didn't talk about those. Uh, I did read about it, but it seemed like it was like really old code that they had, they had gotten out. I just felt like that was kind of in the same vein as as the uh, uh, CSGO source code. It's like, who cares if it's old code? Um, Danny Radcliffe Cliff is, was reading Harry Potter the other day. He was, actually. Is he going to shoot him in the tick? Maybe. Or the knees. Uh, <laughs> oh, my. You haven't turned the people tinfoil hat Robocop I mean, here. There's a theory that Robocop is actually Striker from Mortal Kombat 3 who has died in canon since then. Oh. Huh. 
Do you have enough time to get a snack while Robocop finishes the combo? Ha 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 I actually wondered if some of the, uh, I, I, how I was thinking, like, so one of the most, like, like, a scarring things I've ever seen in terms of violence on TV when I was a kid uh, was the scene where Robocop, uh, where Peter Weller's character uh, gets killed or killed and and ends up being uh, uh, turned into Robocop. But that scene is like really graphic. Well, in my head, it's still graphic. I haven't seen it in like years, but in my head, it's pretty graphic. Um, and it made me think like with the fatalities, like they're not going to, they're they're not gonna that that's a sore spot, man. Like they're not gonna like sh not I don't know sh shoot his limbs off or anything. <laughs> like come on, uh, I'd say it was the bad guy who got dunked in the toxic vat. That one also messed me up. But that one was that in two or one? Was that in I can't remember if that was two or one. Um, but yeah, it, it, that one. Oh, it was one. That's right. That was one. That's right. That's right. Where he's like walking around, his like face is like falling off. Then he gets hit by the by like the UPS truck or whatever. <laughs> man. God damn. I you know, I like RoboCop too actually. You never seen RoboCop? I don't know how it's I don't know how it's aged. I'll be honest, I don't know how it's aged. Uh so I can't say go and watch it now. Um I will tell you that if you do watch it, it's kind of like a uh just to show you, oh, that's where that meme came from or that's where that meme came from. It's one of those kinds of it's kind of it's like watching Dumb and Dumber, you know? Like if you've never seen Dumb and Dumber, watch it because then like a million memes will make sense. <laughs> like it's just, there's so many. Uh, and so, yeah, Robocop, I, you know, I like the remake too, but again, you know, maybe I am just a, you know, a fan of Robocop in general, but I like, I like the remake. I thought it was okay. It was okay. Um, it was a fun, it was a fun one. That was, he was definitely more like, like ro hyper Robocop or something like that. It was crazy. All the stuff you could do. How is Robocop age? Well, Mike, have you seen Indiana Jones last crusade where the guy drinks from the wrong cup? Yes. By the way, the entirety of that movie still holds up really well. I would say all all three of the well, uh, I would say two out of three of the original movies have held up really well. <laughs> but I don't know about uh, yeah, there are certain scenes that definitely stand out. Mm. <laughs> but for the most part, they're pretty good. Um, Karen, oh god, what is this? What is this, Karen? This is Karen. That's the original Karen, the Octomom Karen. That's right. This is the haircut. This is the standard issue haircut here. Uh huh sunglasses and everything oh man somebody i used to date used to watch octomom shows and it was like depressing it was depressing robo got a very generous portrayal of modern detroit very generous <laughs> as, as fucked up and run down as it looked in the movie it's very generous uh, uh all right so uh if this is on used to yes yes we broke up because of that <laughs> How much it holds up depends on how, uh, how much age uh, effects distract you. That's true. That's true. But uh, I think these, these are a lot of practical effects in, uh, well, I mean, there are certain scenes that like the face melting off in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And of course, the guy aging uh, in, uh, in, in Last Crusade and pretty much the entirety of Temple of Doom. Uh, <laughs> like a lot of that stuff maybe didn't age very well, but, but yeah, uh, but that's it. So, uh, that's the news. Sorry, Kimmy. We didn't get to that one thing. I, I would just pull it up and do it now, but you know, I don't, I don't have enough information on it or whatever, but, but if people want to look that up, you can, but that's it. So thank you so much for watching chat. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out during intermission. You guys are the greatest, the greatest. That was for Helestis or Han. You guys choose. Uh, and that's it. Goodbye.